Behold, my stuff. I saved up 3178 legendary commander sculptures and 418 legendary tavern keys to max out as many commanders as I can to upgrade my setup. 4042 sculptures to be accurate. All this time I've been waiting and saving my gold heads and keys for the right conditions, which were, firstly and most importantly, the right commanders that would fit into my 5 marches open field setup, so I could finally break the habit of hoarding these heads and I could finally improve my open field arsenal. And secondly, the horse desire event that would give me better odds of getting gold sculptures for the desired commanders. So I could max my target commanders for less universal gold heads. And in this KVK, when the legendary tavern event has opened, Finally, all planets have aligned. Again. Psst. Hey you. Yeah you. Do you want some fruits? I know what you're thinking. Just how long has he been hoarding to have this much stuff stored up? I really think that at this point, I should rename myself to Fruit Hoarder rather than Fruit Dealer. You know, some people are paid to win. Some are free to play. I'm hoard to play. Or maybe, poor to win. Work hard, play hard, hoard harder. So before I'm getting into opening all these tavern keys and spending all these sweet gold heads, I thought that I should answer the question that most of you are interested about. Why? Why on earth have I been saving up for so long instead of leveling up commanders constantly to keep up with the meta? To answer this question, just like in the previous video, let's jump back in time and go through all the commander setups I've been using since the beginning of this game, to see the progress that got me where I am now and to explain why I'm going to choose the commanders I ended up choosing. So back when I started the game 1419 days ago, most of the commanders we have now were still not in the game. It was the time when Caesar Hannibal was the absolute rally meta and the Richard Charles March and Minamoto Tata were the absolute alpha and omega of the open field. The very first march I used on the open field was CPO and John. That time I still didn't have enough troops to have a full infantry or cavalry march, so I had to go with a mixed march to fight with and CPO John was a real classic that helped me so much in the early days of the game. After that, once I reached enough cavalry troops to fill the full cavalry march, I gave up to the ruthless business model of Lilith and purchased Minamoto. Yeah, I know, shame on me. Although I couldn't afford to max him, I managed to get him to 5512, which was good enough for me that time to have a good open field cavalry march. My Tata was still very underdeveloped, so the very first cavalry march I used was Mina Tomoe and Mina Lancelot. That's right, Tomoe and Lancelot. I mean, having Tomoe to boost Minamoto's rage, skill damage and attack seemed like a good idea and to be honest, it did work pretty well against epic marches people were using that time. It was also the time when hitting resource nodes was a very accepted and common warfare tactic during kill events, so I liked the speed boost Lancelot provided once his march got reduced under 50%. Then Richard was released and the game meta has changed for a really long time. Back then, I didn't have much gems and I didn't know how good Richard would be so I didn't unlock him from the Wheel of Fortune. And this was the moment that haunted me for months to come and changed my entire Rise of Kingdoms gameplay even until this very day. Richard Charles has turned out to be an absolute immortal march that no one could defeat. I still remember seeing Wales defeating entire alliances using just this one single march. No one could outdamage their heal and counterattack. I blamed myself for so long for not going for his will and for not unlocking him. But soon after this, I finally had enough heads and luck with gold keys to bring my Tata to an ok 5452 level. So I started to use Minamoto Tata as my second march. This was also the time when I had enough infantry to fill the full infantry march, so I started to use Sun Tzu LG as my first full-pledged infantry march. By this time, I already learned the lesson that hoarding gold heads till the new meta commanders come out is the way to keep up with the game's power creep, so it was time to max out my very first legendary commander. No, not YSG. Saladin came out and I went all in for him. He seemed like the only possible option to counter Richard's heal that time and he was providing so much stats and utility that I was very determined to get him. I managed to get him on the very first Saladin MGE ever and I instantly spent all my saved up heads to bring him to 5551 but I have been using him ever since. I still think until this day that he was the best investment I've done in this game. So with this, I started to use Saladin Tao Tao, CPO Juan, Minamoto Pella and Sun Tzu LG to fight. Then finally, Lilith has blessed us and introduced the Card King event, which was a game changer for everyone who hasn't been able to unlock certain commanders from MGEs yet. Yes, that meant that I could finally go and get Richard the First. He was finally reachable for everyone and I didn't hesitate to spend all my saved up gems to finally unlock him and to use all my gold tests to start to upgrade him. This was a major moment that made me become an infantry player. 
So with this, I had Salad in total, Minamoto Pella, CPO Juan, and Richard Sun to 4 marches. I messed up my charts and didn't max his first skill before leveling him up, so he was cursed to suffer for years to come. Being left behind in the you should have maxed his first skill before leveling him up box. After that, Alexander the Great was introduced into the game and him and Richard quickly have become the new meta on the open field. Once I maxed Richard, I immediately started to work on him and soon I was able to use Saladin's Hata, Sansu Eoji, Minamoto Pella, CPO Juan and Alex Richard, which I have been using ever since. Then the game has introduced Etoflat, who even though was a peacekeeping commander, her AoE debuff was nothing to laugh at. And not only that she was very useful, she was also free, so I paired her with Bybars for a sweet AoE debuffing march. Then the game released Kuan Yu and Leonidas, who were heavily criticized that time for being too squishy and not bringing what they promised. Yet most people ended up maxing them and using them even until these days. I felt that my setup was in a serious need for more damage. And once I saw what Kuan Yu can do, I immediately knew that he was the answer to my questions. This was also the time when Attila Takeda was ruling the rally meta. But I still had such a deep impression of Richard Charles destroying the open field from the old times that I decided to stick with infantry. So I went for Kuan Yu who I managed to max instantly and paired him with Sun Tzu at secondary. I was still very unsure about Leonidas back then. In the meantime, I made Constantine into 5511 and paired him with Juan. So with this, I had Kuan Yu Sun Tzu, Saladin Cao Cao, Constantine Juan, Boybars Etofled, and Alex Richard. Then in the next infantry cycle, the game has released Harald, who got a lot of criticism and hate, but I did like what he was providing. A lot of counterattack and a skill damage that can fire off multiple times, I'll take that. So I decided to go for him. This was when I rearranged my setup, got Leo to 5511 and started to use these 5 marches. Alex Richard as tank, Kuan Yu Leonidas for AoE damage and silence, Saladin Athelflaed for debuff, Constantine Juan for buff and Charles Harald as a tanky counterattacking march. And as you see, that's what I've been using ever since. And yes, that's how long I've been saving up, since Harald came out. So why? I started to save heads because commanders were coming out too fast and I wanted to be sure that I have enough heads once a game breaking pair like Attila Takada used to be shows up again. Later on I continued to save heads because I wanted to have 5 infantry marches so it would be easier to get good equipments for them and the city theme boost would apply for all of them too. And eventually I kept saving heads simply because I wanted to make this video for content. But the way the meta has been changing and how good some of the new cavalry and archer commanders are, I dropped my plan and decided to spend all these heads to improve my open field marches regardless their troop type. I'm sure you have noticed that I never maxed YSG. I know that most people consider him the first must have commander and the best value in overall. But for me, it just never happened. I wanted to go for him every single day. But back when he was released, there was no one to pair him with. Well, aside the very popular Richard YSG and Alex YSG odd pairings, the only other legendary archer was El Cid. And yeah, I don't think I need to explain why I didn't like that pair. The first time I was almost certain that I will max him was when Ramses came out. I really loved that pair and what Ramses was providing, but that was the time when I was very motivated to get 5 good infantry marches, so I ended up letting them go and after that I just had different plans. So without further ado, let the upgrade begin. So who were my targets? I like commanders that either do buff, debuff or got any skills that can somehow help other marches on the field. Since I am an open field player and because I'm also not the proper whale, I consider myself more of a support for others. So besides buff and debuffing, I also wanted to add more AoE damage since AoE has been very important on the field for a while now and I was seriously lacking commanders with it. So naturally, I already had two commanders I've been eyeing with for a while that had both of these abilities. XY and William. Yeah, I know, what a surprise. Actually, it was not now when I reached 3178 godheads, but back in 4th of March of 2022. It was then when Nevsky was released into the game and I immediately knew that I want him. His stat bonuses, high damage output and overall value reminded me of Saladin when he was introduced into the game. It was love at first sight and I did not care about running 5 infantry marches anymore. I originally was planning to pair him with William as the two seemed to have a really good synergy, providing a lot of support and aid to my other marches and 
and having a really great damage output. However, I've been planning to get William and pair him with Saladin to make a good support march. But when William came out, I still felt bad at ditching Ethel Flat as I thought her AoE debuff was still very useful. I was also thinking about getting Gilgamesh at some point, because I really like the 30% health debuff he does, while x could provide a 30% defense debuff from another march as well. It also would have been a good excuse to finally get YSG since he seemed to be really great with Gilgamesh, but I never had an Archer march before, therefore I didn't have good equipments for them, so for now I decided to wait and hope for an infantry who would have a good buff or debuff and went for XY and Nevsky instead. For the AoE defense debuff from XY, high damage output from both commanders and amazing stats in utility Nevsky could provide. So right there, I maxed both of them. I already had 35 heads for Nevsky from the Wheel of Fortune, 25 after summoning and 13 heads for XY, 3 after summoning, so it cost me 1352 gold heads, 248 gold stars, 47 blessed gold stars and 47 bundles of gold stars in total to max them both effectively reducing the amount of gold heads I had from 3178 to 1826. And I had no regret of doing so. It was pure love, passion and joy. I felt like a true badass, running around with the current meta for the first time in years, finally spending all these gold heads I've been saving for so long. I was running around feeling like a real champion, fighting and getting kills, winning champions of Olympia, becoming the MVP in several events. And to make it better, I was ready to open the legendary tavern keys as well and max out my next target, William. By this time, I saved up 345 keys because I wanted the 10 extra heads for William before I used universal gold heads on him. But then, the developers announced that from the next KBK on, they will add the Heart's Desire event that will let you pick 5 commanders to get from the legendary tavern keys, which seemed like a big upgrade from the traditional legendary tavern event. Of course it meant more heads for the desired commanders. I was also hoping that they would add Pakal to the event by then, since I had my eyes on him for a while now. So since this KVK didn't last very long and the fights ended pretty early, by the way, this was the KVK where I won on the honor points list from the first video, I decided to wait till the next one comes out to open my legendary keys, since I was in no hurry to max out more commanders. So I kept on hoarding goat heads and legendary tavern keys once again, till the next KVK has finally arrived and the tavern has opened once again. By this time I was on 2700 goat heads again and 418 legendary tavern keys and the day has come when I could finally open them all. I opened the event tab and wait, what? These are two separate events? But why? They do the same, but they're different. So the horse desire is for people who know which commanders they want and the legendary tavern is for people who want to make sure that they can get 10 heads after opening 200 keys. It doesn't make much sense to me, but anyways, now that I realized that the legendary tavern and the horse desire are actually separated, I was pretty curious if the drop rates and value was the same or not. So in the name of research and for video content, I decided to separate my saved up keys and open 200 200 keys for both events and compare the drops. The legendary tavern event didn't need much planning, just open 200 keys and get the 10 heads for any commanders from the list. But for the horse desire, we could choose 5 commanders to get from the list. Since they didn't add Pakal, I only had one commander I wanted to get from the event. To maximize the amount of heads I can get for him, I was planning to pick William and 4 other commanders I already maxed. So when I got the heads for commanders I already maxed, the tavern would give me coins instead which I could use to buy more keys and get more heads for William. Epic plan! The plan was ready! And then? What did I just do? So, since the Heart's Desire event only allows you to open 100 keys a day, why though? Because of that, I decided to open up 18 keys on the first day and then 100, 100 on the other days. The problem was that I did it 25 minutes before reset, which was just before work for me at 7.35 in the morning. I was sleepy, tired and had to hurry to get to work. So my brain has completely stopped working properly and forgot about the plan I had about this event. So instead of picking William plus 4 already maxed commanders, Sleepy Me thought it was a good idea to pick 5 commanders I haven't maxed yet. I blame my job for this. So Sleepy Me decided to go for William, well at least I didn't mess this up, Leo because I left him at 5511 and I thought that maybe I could get some heads to improve his skill levels, Nebu because if I decided to max an archer he could be an option and Zenobi a YSS because I still got no Garys on commanders so I thought that maybe one day. I don't even know what I was thinking. Oh well, anyways, 
How did the two events fare and what did I get from 418 plus 33 legendary tavern keys? I will show you in detail at the end of the video as always. So since the event only allowed 100 keys to be opened in a day, that meant that I only could max William after the pass 4 has opened. So I decided to wait 2 more days till I open all my keys and max him out. With XY and Nevsky maxed, my current setup consisted Alex Richard, Saladin Athelflaed, Charles Harald, Juan Yu Leonidas and XY Nevsky and I had to further upgrade it before the fights begun. I mentioned earlier that I was thinking about getting Gilgamesh at some point because of his 30% health buff, but ended up dropping the plan because I was hoping that Lilith would add a new infantry commander with a similar debuffing ability. And oh thanks god, my prayers have been heard and Lilith gave us CPO Prime. He had AoE, high damage output, march speed, health bonus and an AoE health debuff which was exactly what I was looking for. His wheel of fortune has popped up before KVK and I was ready for his wheel. I opened up the gem tokens I collected during my honor push I made my first video about and spent a nice chunk on his wheel. Here I need to mention that I'm not a big fan of the wheel of fortune event. I feel the amount of heads one can get from 100 spins very underwhelming. So therefore I usually don't max wheels and only go for 10, 25, max maximum 45 spins for commanders I really want, which only happened with Guan Yu and Harald before. I rather spend my gems on the egg event for blueprints and materials. Anyways, on CPO's first wheel I got 45 spins, on the second I did 25 and on the third wheel I only did 10. I did get quite lucky this time though and from 80 spins I managed to get 59 heads for him, 45 after summoning him, which was enough to bring him to 4000. After that it took me 641 gold heads, 160 gold stars, 37 blessed gold stars and 37 bundle of gold stars to max all his skills and bring him to level 60. Reducing the amount of gold heads I had from 2700 to 2059. I decided to pair him with Alex for two reasons. The first one is that I'm still a fan of Guan Yu and Leonidas and I did not feel the need to separate them. And the second one was I've been looking for a commander to replace Richard from my setup so CPO just fits there perfectly. After getting CPO now I seek to replace the weakest point of my setup. Charles. I still liked him a lot but I've been planning to max out Pakal and pair him with Harald ever since he was released ages ago so that's exactly what I did. 225 gold stars, 21 blessed gold stars, 36 bundle of gold stars and 690 legendary sculptures later which reduced the amount of gold heads I had from 2059 to 1369 I had him maxed. After this I only had one target left. I already had his first skill on level 3 from past wheel of fortune events and after opening the legendary tavern keys I had an extra 39 heads for him, which meant that I only needed 631 gold heads to max all his skills. So after spending another 54 gold stars, I only took him to level 4 since I was planning to keep him as secondary commander, reducing the total amount of gold heads I had from 1392 to 761, with that I replaced Atoll Fled with him, which meant that I finished upgrading my setup for now. Yeah, I know that I still had enough heads to max one more commander, but I always want to leave enough heads to be able to max at least one commander at all times times, just in case Lilith does release an absolute beast. So with this, this is where it got me. This was my open fill setup before I spent all my gold heads and this is what I have now. Paco Harald as my tank, high counter attack and anti swarm march. Kuan Yu Leonidas as a damage dealer and AoE silencer march. Alexander and CPO as a debuffer high damage support march. Saladin William as a buffing support march and XY Nevsky as an AoE defense debuffing high damage output damage dealer march. Lots of AoE, lots of support, lots of buff and debuffs. Perfection. Yeah, I know that this is not the best possible setup right now and that technically I could have gone for better commanders. But this was the setup I wanted to get and what would benefit my equipments the most. I wanted to upgrade my existing marches and not completely rebuilding them. And as you will see in the upcoming KVK video, the new setup did really well. So, how many Universal Legendary Sculptures, Gold Stars and Tomes of Knowledge did it take to max out these 5 commanders and what did I get exactly from the Legendary Tavern Keys? Let's get to the numbers. Opening up 418 Legendary Tavern Keys in total got me 170 Legendary Sculptures for different commanders, including 3 summonings and the 10 heads I got after opening up 200 keys, 47 Gold Stars, 10 Blessed Gold Stars, 15 bundles of gold stars, 2,920,000 tomes of knowledge, 63 hours of training speedups, 26 hours of healing speedups, 68 hours of research speedups, 28 million food, 60,500,000 wood, 43,250,000 stone, 18 million gold and 400 coins I could use to buy more keys or gold heads in the shop. 
So, how did the Horse Desire and the Legendary Tavern compare? This is what I got from 200 keys in the Horse Desire event. And this is what I got from 200 keys in the Legendary Tavern event. So as you see, they did very similarly, with one big difference. With the Horse Desire, I managed to get 22 heads for my target, while with the Legendary Tavern, I only got 10. And that 10 didn't actually come from opening the keys, but from the guaranteed 10 heads you get once you open 200 keys. And now, if you're interested in how these two events compare with the newly added Legendary Tavern as well, I got you. For this, I only had 30 keys, so I compared the first 30 keys of each event to see how they did. And because of the three events had the same odds, they did fairly similarly. Now about the maxed commanders. Maxing out one legendary commander costs 700 gold heads, 690 heads after summoning. But for some commanders, I already got heads from the Wheel of Fortune and or Legendary Tavern. So in total, maxing these 5 commanders cost me 3314 Universal Legendary Sculptures, 687 Gold Stars, 105 Blessed Gold Stars, 120 Bundles of Gold Stars, and 171,117,000 Tomes of Knowledge. Because I didn't need to bring every commander to level 60. After all, not all of them are primary commanders. I could be speaking about commander setups and pairings for ages, but in this video, I just wanted to show you how I've been upgrading and honing my open field setup. It's not what I think the best, also not what I would recommend for everyone. This is what I thought I'd like the most. After all, it is a game and everyone enjoys the game in a different way. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any question, please don't be shy to text me on Discord, in game or just in a comment under the video. Thank you for watching. Fruity out. See you in the next video. Maybe.